Hello, I'm Paige, an avatar from Deep Brain. Here's a recording of our recent webinar with Deep Brain AI and Kiosk Information Systems on innovating guest experiences and the future of hospitality. Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Joe Murphy. I'm a business development manager with Deep Brain AI. I'm excited to uh, share some information about what Deep Brain is doing and specifically how our virtual humans are being used in the hospitality sector. And with that, I'd like to introduce Mike Blake. Hi, everyone. I'll go in a little bit deeper who I am in a few minutes here, but I just want to say hi. And once again, Joe and Morgan, thanks for having me. This is a great opportunity and looking forward to it. And I'm Morgan Green. I'm representing Kiosk Information Systems. I'm a product manager on the solutions development team. I'm excited to share with you guys a little bit more about our solutions in the hospitality sector and excited to hear from our partners in Mike and Joe. All right, awesome. Mike, why don't you kick us off and tell us about AHLA? Sure, Joe, thank you. Um, so hopefully we're in the screen sharing world. So, um, you know, I just wanted to self promote me for just a second, just so you could see that um, I have an interesting background in the way that I've worked in the hotel world. So I was CIO at Hyatt and Commune, but I also have been working for the trade association. And really what we try to do is just harness the collective wisdom of all the technology leaders and really be on the lookout for some fantastic technology and see if we can innovate and infuse our industry with technology. So think of me as that hot, white hot center point where let me tell you just a little bit about HLA because I think it'll help you understand how that white hot center point works because really HLA's role is to advocate, promote and unite the industry. So think of all the public policies and what have you, that's one side of the business. And really when we look at the segments in our industry, we represent all the brands, the owners, the management companies, even independent properties. So we have, we represent over 3.2 million rooms and 10 of the 10 largest US hotel companies. So we have a pretty good purview into the hospitality sector. And really what my group is about is technology. And we do standards and best practices within the context of that technology to, to help that. And really, um, you know, if you're giving me a few minutes, I can't help but just really give everyone kind of hospitality tech trends. And it's interesting to know how we got these. So um, within HTNG or AHLA, my, our organization, we have a bunch, most CIO representatives of the major brands. And what we did in October is surveyed them and said, what are you guys working on that's innovative? What are those tech trends that you guys are really thinking that's out there? So I'm not going to go left to right. I'm going to go right to left because it it kind of kind of makes sense when you look at this stuff. When you see, you know, privacy and cybersecurity, privacy. There's a lot of new privacy laws coming out. Um, it's a little bit of a subset of cybersecurity, but that's always going to be on someone's mind. I think sustainability is, is interesting and a lot of it's going to manifest within EV chargers and what have you. And as hotels are looking at how to better use resources and, and look at new builds and what have you. And of course, robotics is, is always an interesting world where, uh, you know, eh, Robotics are definitely going to supplement, and, and this is going to be a theme that you'll hear from me is, you know, I, I'm not worried about robots and AI taking over people's jobs or the world, but they'll certainly make people's jobs and world a whole lot better and easier. So we're looking at augmentation, not, not replacement. And then, of course, AI. And I think this webinar is absolutely proof positive of how excited everyone is about AI and the different applications of it. And we certainly do um, love what both both Deep Brain and Kiosk is doing because it, it just it's so exciting to see a direct application of AI and actually see it in use and people doing it. So those are the trends. What I'd like to do now is just tell you 
uh, a little bit about our events where you can see us. So you can, if you're in Europe or Asia Pacific, you could see us there or uh, our on the road series. These, this is going to go by way too fast. So you guys can just hop to ahla.com and see this. But the biggest thing that we're doing this year, which is new, is the hospitality show in Vegas. And we invite everybody on the line to come out and see, and you'll see some innovative uh things that are happening within the hospitality industry. And you'll certainly see um, a, a nice complement of hoteliers there also looking to see what's out there. So we would love to invite everybody out there. Now with that, um, I'm gonna hand this over to my friend over at Kiosk, Morgan Green. And let me just hit the stop share and we'll go that way. Morgan, to you. All right, so let me pull up what I've got for everyone today. All right. Can everyone see that? All right. Uh, so as was mentioned, my name's Morgan Green. I'm here representing Kiosk Information Systems. Um, I'm going to start by giving a little bit of an overview about Kiosk as a company, where we come from and where we're going um, in our industry, and then I'll get into the products, uh, because as I mentioned, I'm a product-driven um, individual, I'm a product manager here, and so that's what I really focus on, but uh, let's get into it. So first and foremost, um, Kiosk as a company, we are an end-to-end -end solution provider in the kiosk industry. Um, we do everything from those initial conversations of concept, the hardware design and manufacturing, and you can kind of see how that ecosystem flows around from fabrication and manufacturing, installing the actual kiosk itself, servicing and, and supporting and potentially monitoring those kiosks as they are in the wild, as we like to say, doing the software development or partnering with software solution providers like Deep Brain AI to bring these unique solutions to the marketplace, as well as assisting in PCI compliance, UL certification, CE certification, and all of those um, type of agencies that we could encounter. So here's a little bit about that process that I was mentioning. We start with a conversation about essentially what need your customer or your industry is needing to fill or potentially um, enhance. We work on the components that are needed, right? So if you're gonna have a solution that is supplementing a service, it's going to typically need to um, perform that service. So it's gonna have different components, whether that's a payment device, um, cameras, microphones, speakers, et cetera. Uh, we work with you to show you those different concepts in reiterations of renderings, decide on what's going to work best for your environment, your customers, your use case. Uh, we put out prototypes. We can do a pilot program um, to gauge those su the success of those environments. And then we work with you on the installation schedule and the development of that kiosk program. Like I mentioned, we do have a software aspect to our business as well. Um, we partner with uh, software providers like DeepBrain. That's the first option you're seeing here. Um, and that's gonna help us. Uh, we can take a partner authored software, port that to our hardware solution um, and bring that solution to market. We also have our own software development teams who could author a software based on your user flow um, and your unique needs uh, for your solution. And then we are also able to take um, a software program that you might already have in-house and port it again to our hardware solution so that it has a customer facing um, aspect to it. And then uh, these are some of the services that we also provide once those kiosks are out in the wild, as I said. So to maximize their uptime, that's the point of having a kiosk, right? It's having it working, having it customer facing and having it successful for those customers to utilize and for your staffing and workforce to be supplemented by. Uh, so the first step in that with our hardware support services is we help with making sure that those sites are acceptable 
for um, these hardware installations. Um, we help with preventative maintenance to make sure that they are uh, being utilized uh, as much as possible. They're not breaking down. They're not having connectivity issues. We stock uh, parts in-house uh, so that we can exchange them. We can perform break fix with our trained kiosk technicians by sending parts into the field to swap those out. And a lot of this is made possible by our operating system support services aspect of our business. So we have the capability to monitor the hardware health and the operating environment health of those kiosks so that we know before a customer comes to you and says, hey, machines busted in the lobby, you know, we can say there's an issue at this site. Let's send a tech out. Let's send a part out. It looks like, you know, these the printers offline or something or what have you. Um, and we can get to that before the customer does ultimately. Um, and then, like I said, that extends to the security suite, um, software issues, imaging those kiosks um, per the software requirements. All right, so what does all of that have to do with the hospitality industry? We have uh, three products here that you'll see, and they, they sort of flow the same way that um, a guest at a hotel would flow through on that journey. The first product of kiosk that you would see that we would port um, with our partners, the AI concierge, you can see AI Jonathan on the screen. If you were at CES, you would have seen a similar demonstration on a kiosk of ours where you could go, you could ask uh, the AI concierge where the nearest coffee shop was, where the bathroom is, you know, what time is breakfast, those sort of applications that um, run alongside what a concierge would do, um, but you would have it in this kiosk form. So this kiosk is meant as an attention grabber. It's a digital signage or a wayfinding unit for us. It's got a 32 inch um, touch screen monitor on there, speakers, microphone, um, so that it is meant to be very interactive and it's the first thing that a guest would see when they um, approach the hotel. The next thing that you're going to come to, the next solution you would see is a guest check-in kiosk. We could also make note that you could port the concierge onto the guest check-in so that the AI um, could also help with that check-in process ra rather than it being you know, a tactile process of pressing buttons or um, navigating that way, you could do it verbally, uh, just the traditional way, but with the AI concierge instead. Um, it's a little bit more of a complex unit from a componentry standpoint, just because there's a lot more functionality that comes in when you're considering checking in a hotel guest. So you've got to verify identification, you've got a card reader, um, you know, barcode scanner, receipt printer, I won't get into all of it, but um, you'll notice there is an ADA navigation pad on there as well, um, because ADA um, and persons with disability inclusivity for us uh, is a pillar of our business as well. Um, and then as you move through, you've checked into your room, you've maybe hung out for a little bit, it's late at night, you want a snack, you wander down to the pantry area of the lobby, and you'll see, once again, we have a, a desktop kiosk where you could perform a self-checkout, uh, get your hot pocket and soda, check out with the camera vision, um, charge it to your room if you want, charge it to the card, um, and that way the, the hotel could supplement their overnight staff uh, with an unattended pantry um, in that manner. All right, and then a little bit better look at AI concierge um, with our studio model, Jonathan. It's important to note that this is uh, meant to be uh, interactive. Uh, that's why it's gonna be one of the larger screens that we have. When AI Jonathan is not in use, I mean, the use case for this type of wayfinding kiosk is almost endless. I mean, think about the ad space that you could also on these, you can 
um, use it to update reservations as well. Um, you know, advertise spa packages, advertise restaurant specials, um, all of those sorts of things. And again, if you were at CES, you saw that we worked this into um, essentially like a frequently asked questions um, help desk scenario for a hotel. So again, you know, what time is checkout? Where's the bathroom? Where's the pool? Uh, when can I go to the gym? That sort of thing. So all of this can be branded to meet your customer needs. Um, and I should have prefaced this. If anyone has any component related questions or wants uh, more in-depth information on these products themselves, my contact information will be at the end and I can provide more specifications that go a little bit more in depth than I will today on the kiosk themselves. So again, here's that guest check-in. It's important that it's intuitive. It's important um, that it works first and foremost. So it can encode key cards. You can upgrade your room. So it's gonna be able to print those key cards out of the front. It can authenticate and verify your ID. Um, like I said, it's got an ADA navigation pad and then it, it just performs all of the other, you know, check-in and check-out, payment, billing, receipt, emailing, all of those functions that you would have at a typical um, check-in counter. And here is a closer look at the pantry self-checkout solution. Um, again, an unattended pantry solution so that you truly can have a 24-7 experience in that um, corner store of the lobby. Uh, it, the camera vision box specifically and the AI that runs on that itself allows um, items that maybe don't have a barcode or are more deli related items to be scanned, to be identified, and then to be billed um, that way. Uh, and yeah, just again, it can increase your guest access to pantry, which is additional revenue for your properties um, without the need of adding a specific um, person to that role. And they could be repurposed for doing something, you know, um, else. And like I mentioned, um, I would be remiss if I didn't include the importance of ADA compliance and giving considerations um, to ADA functionality within our kiosk. So uh, we wouldn't really you know, be doing justice to our jobs of creating these self-service platforms if they weren't self-service for everyone. You know, um, so being inclusive of persons with disabilities um, and uh, the ADA aspect of this public facing platforms that we have. Uh, we work with a group called TPGI who helps us to make sure that our hardware and our software platforms um, remain compliant and remain accessible for all parties, knowing that especially in the hospitality industry, you're going to see people from all walks of life um, who come through and utilize these platforms. All right, I will toss it back over to Joe here. There we go. Joe, you might be on mute. Wow, what a rookie mistake. <laughs> All right, thank you for handing that over. Uh, I'm here to talk about Deep Brain AI. I'll provide an overview of our company, brief introduction, uh, talk about our AI concierge, which has been deployed at Novotel Hotel. And then uh, we'll also talk about the technology stack a little bit at the end. So before we get started, uh, there, there's a hot topic question. What is generative AI? So I figured what better way to define generative AI than by asking ChatGPT, which is getting all the AI headlines these days. So when I log into ChatGPT and say, what is generative AI? It gives me this uh, pretty handy explanation. It refers to a type of AI that is generating or creating new content that is not contained within its training data. Uh, it's a little technical, but I think most people can understand that uh, AI systems are typically trained on data and they learn patterns and they learn to do 
tasks like generating text or recognizing speech, even facial recognition. This new wave of generative AI is generating content that hasn't been seen before. It's original content. And that can be images, videos, music, text. What we do at Deep Brain AI is we generate videos. So our models are text in, video out. And so I'll, I'll talk more on that later. But I also was just listening to a podcast last week and uh, the CEO of OpenAI was asked what, what jobs or, or what uh, industries will be transformed by generative AI. And the one that jumped to the top of his list was customer service. And when we talk about servicing our customers with AI humans like DeepBrain has inside a kiosk format like our partners can bring from kiosk information systems, uh, I think that the industry is headed this way. We see this trend already taking hold in Korea and Asia, and uh, we see this trend is kind of uh, quickly heading to North America and Europe. So a little bit about Deep Brain AI. We are uh, headquartered in Seoul, South Korea. The company was founded in 2016. We've raised uh, $54 million in venture capital to date. We have uh, around 120 employees right now, and we're growing rapidly. Uh, I work out of our Palo Alto office in uh, California. We also have offices in China, Japan, and headquarters in Korea. So about our core technology. So, as I mentioned earlier, we developed a text-to-video solution, uh, but our text-to-video solution has some uh, pretty distinct capabilities around lip sync, uh, lip sync, creating photorealistic uh, avatars, and I'll just play a quick video here. So you can see you would just type in some text, hit play. Hello, nice to meet you. I am an artificial human made with deep learning technology. So that's just a quick example and really just defining our core technology that I'll probably reiterate through this presentation, text in, video out. And uh, I mentioned that DeepBrain was founded in 2016. Our US office opened one year ago. So uh, when we hit the US, one of the first things we wanted to do was work with a recognizable person to try our technology out. And we actually worked with Howie Mandel and created a digital twin or a virtual human of Howie. And here's a quick video of that. Hey, everybody, it's AI Howie coming to you with the help of my new friends at Deep Brain. Thanks to the power of artificial intelligence, you will soon be seeing me everywhere. You, you ever, do you remember the movie Gremlins? Yes, I love it. So that's just a quick example of, uh, you can see Howie Mandel, the likeness, the voice, the mannerisms, the way he moves his hands, it's all part of our deep learning process when we create these virtual humans. And now a little bit about the AI kiosk uh, and the concierge service. So I'm gonna jump right to the video here because showing is believing. Uh, the kiosk, the AI concierge, has been deployed at one of the flagship Novotel hotels in Korea. So these videos are in Korean, but I think it demonstrates the technology, and I'll let the video uh, speak for itself. So 
So that was a quick example. And what we saw there was the guest can speak to the kiosk or use uh, the touch input. So it's a multimodal uh, engagement and they can switch back and forth anytime they want. So whatever they're more comfortable with. And then uh, we did a guest interview after that. And here's some information that that guest shared with us. AI 컨시어지 서비스를 이용해 보니까 일단 사람처럼 생긴 모습이 나와서 너무 신기했고요. 그 다음에 뭐 제가 원하는 정보를 속속 알려주는 느낌이라서 생각보다 되게 편리했습니다. 직원들이 없는 시간대에도 이렇게 자리를 딱 지키고서 제가 궁금한 걸 알려줄 수 있는 것 같아서 너무 좋았던 것 같습니다. 어, 이런 서비스들이 많이 생기면 좀더 생활이 편리해질 것 같습니다. All right. And now let's talk about a case study. So that particular kiosk installation, uh, the traffic was monitored for two months and a total of 3,297 questions were asked and answered over that two month period. So we're averaging 55 questions per day and the average engagement with the kiosk, conversational or touch is two and a half minutes. So what this translates to is uh, 140 minutes per day of employee time saved because the AI human inside the kiosk format is handling questions that would typically be uh, handled by the real employees. This translates to about 70 hours per month or 35 days per year of saved time just with one kiosk install. So what are people asking? Uh, the, the number one category people are asking about was restaurant information, uh, followed by amenities and basic hotel information. Uh, floor guide was ranking very high. Uh, menu, uh, so food service menu items was another top one. Operating hours, you can see the list goes on and on. People had questions about car rentals, uh, local, where, where's the ATM? What is the convenience store that's nearby? What are the rules for the pool? It really is a, a widespread, but the number one request that we've had since this kiosk was installed was uh, support for multi-language. And that is something that our avatars can support. So you can imagine if uh, you want to use this kiosk, whatever language you speak, you could select from a menu and then engage and get the information you need. So that's a, that's a huge uh, problem that's solved is translating and getting information in the language that I'm most comfortable with. And then over that two month period, we also received some guest feedback. It was overwhelmingly positive. Uh, I'm not going to read all of these, but I will call out a couple that I thought were really uh, fun. So it was nice to be able to ask a lot of questions with less pressure. So just like how uh, employees can get stressed out when there's long lines, people can get stressed out when there's long lines, the guests can get stressed out and they might feel hurried or rushed when it is their turn. With the kiosk environment, they don't have that pressure. They can walk up anytime, ask the question. And then <laughs> the story that the hotel shared with us is one guest actually spoke to the kiosk for about 45 minutes. Now that's that's uncommon, but you can imagine uh, it's an engaging experience and they were enjoying uh, asking this AI human questions and getting the answers back. And the other one I like to point out was, uh, it was nice to have a special experience and the children were fascinated by the AI concierge. There, there's a little more to this story is uh, when this family checked into the hotel, they tried the kiosk, they thought it was cool and they went home Sometime later, they came back to the hotel for another visit, another trip, and the children ran straight to the kiosk and started asking it questions. It's just this new technology is breathing life into customer experience. It's engaging and uh, it's just creating that, that tech halo or that wow factor that this hotel, this brand is on the cutting edge of AI and deploying new technologies to bring enjoyment and delight their guests. So a little bit about the uh, technology. Uh, we call this our AI human software. It's interactive and engaging. It's real time conversation with a virtual human. It supports full HD video and uh, it's available not only in the kiosk, but browsers and mobile apps as well. And this is just a quick demo of one of our newest AI human models. 
Hello and welcome to our hotel. My name is Mira and I am your virtual concierge created by the deep learning team at Deep Brain AI. How can I help you today? Notice it's a very natural engagement. There's a smile on the face. There's inflection in the voice. This is all part of our deep learning process when we're creating these AI humans. And then a little bit about the tech stack. So if we look at this slide on the left, we have the customer. The customer is engaging with a virtual human on either browser, mobile app, or kiosk format. The first thing they do is they speak, and that audio is translated to text. That's a speech-to-text engine. Uh, DeepBrain can work with all the most popular speech-to-text engines out there. We are agnostic of the STT stack. So really what we need is that STT engine to convert that inquiry into text, and then that text is fed to an NLP system or a chatbot. Many companies have their own existing chatbots that we can integrate with, or if companies don't have an existing chatbot, we can provide a chatbot solution that we've developed internally. The job of the chatbot is to take the text question in and figure out the most appropriate response or answer for that question. That is then fed to our video synthesis engine and the video synthesis engine is the AI human delivering the information in a natural humanistic format. So the whole process through audio gets converted to text, text gets processed by the chatbot, and then DeepBrain's video synthesis uh, provides the AI human solution. Uh, this AI human solution has been uh, deployed at Novatel as we covered but it's also been deployed uh, for other companies as well in customer service formats. 7-Eleven did an unmanned store and they use a virtual human to ask, answer questions about what's in stock, what's on sale, how do I check out at an unmanned store? The virtual human is engaging and greeting and helping customers along the way. Uh, finance industry is also a, a hot one for virtual humans. Uh, DeepBrain has deployed a kiosk in uh, KB Bank and beyond KB Bank, we're actually working with the top five banks across Korea right now for different types of deployments. But the use cases are pretty much the same. You could think of a virtual lobby leader where you walk into a bank. Uh, when I go to Bank of America, a person comes up to me with an iPad in their hand and says, hi, how can I help you today? And then depending on what my task is or what I'm trying to accomplish, they tell me who I need to talk to, or maybe they could do it on the iPad, or maybe I could do it on the mobile app. So uh, this kiosk inside the bank of KB Bank is doing that lobby leader position. And then uh, I'm not going to dive too deep into the technologies, but uh, chatbot, speech synthesis, video synthesis, and the AI human SDK, DeepBrain has all of these capabilities in-house. And uh, we have over 94 patents. So I, I think the main thing I want to sum up with is this is a deployed service, field trialed, field tested, ready to go, and uh, we've won many awards for this service. Uh, we are uh, a Microsoft Pegasus partner, so Microsoft for Startups is uh, one of our sponsors. Uh, we've won awards at CES Show in both 2022 and 2023, so two years in a row. We won Best Product of the Year at the NAB Show, which is the National Association of Broadcasters. We've been recognized by T-Mobile, and uh, we've won, won multiple media awards as well. And with that, I'll stop my share, and I can see we have some questions. So I'll jump in here. And let me just see a question here. All right, so the first question in the list is about the privacy of LLMs like ChatGPT. So as I mentioned earlier, most companies have their existing chatbot already. So as far as privacy and cybersecurity go, uh, whatever privacy they employ or uh, cybersecurity they have their existing chatbot, we'll extend that. Now, talking about large language models specifically, uh, that would be up to the provider of the large language model to work it out with the hotel or brand or the end client. And I think, Mike, I know you had mentioned that uh, 
privacy is a top concern of the guests from your surveys. Is there anything you want to add on that? Uh, the only thing I can add, Joe, is that it, you know, for any solution to be successful, I think it has to be engineered with a concept of security within it and also privacy, because those two tenants are absolutely, uh, you know, they're on the checklist for any, any technology provider of hotel services to say, okay, what, how are they approaching it? What are they looking at? So if folks are selling into our vertical, um, those two just have to be automatically included in the solution. Yeah, and I'll just add that I do see large language models as the future of customer service engagement with AI humans, but a solution like ChatGPT is not what I would call customer ready. Uh, ChatGPT is an amazing service, but sometimes it's just wrong. It'll give you an answer and it'll give you the wrong answer and it'll be confident about that. So as far as large language models go, I envision a future where they'll be tailored to a guest experience and to a brand experience. And then hotels can work with companies to get those tailored large language models deployed to talk to their customers the way they want their brand represented. ChatGPT isn't suitable for that. Uh, question. Can you ask AI Howie what the weather is in San Diego using an API call? So AI Howie is a unique case because he's a celebrity. So he needs to protect his image. Any usage of AI Howie needs to be signed off by his team. So technically it's possible for any one of our AI humans to be accessed and uh, provide information uh, through our SDK. But uh, celebrities, there's a special level of negotiation that has to happen there. Next question. How sensitive are the microphones to the environment and background noise, white noise, and uh, other such noises? So I can share that uh, we developed a kiosk uh, with a touch to talk. So it's not always listening. So when you touch the interface, it starts listening. I don't know, Morgan, do you have any more information on background noise and the microphones? Yeah, I was just going to say that um, showing the solution in a very busy, very large trade show environment like CES um, is one of probably the most background noise environments you can you can have. Um, and the microphone had no issues uh, when we were asking it those questions verbally. Um, it, it will show on the screen the way that it's interpreting your words so that you can see exactly what it's hearing you say in case it maybe does misinterpret something um, and you might have to re-ask the question, uh, but it, it had no issue in the trade show environment. So I can only assume that a hotel lobby uh, would be at, at worst the same as a trade show environment. Um, but we do, we do work with several different components and microphones are a, a very um, interchangeable component if a customer's got a special request for a type of microphone. Uh, but we've definitely had a lot of trials where we um, have tried different types of microphones in different environments. Yeah, uh, I'll add, we have done deployments in mall environments and airport environments, which mm -hmm. the airports are super noisy. And there is some state-of-the-art technology applied for noise cancellation and noise suppression. And uh, typically what you'll also see is when these kiosks are installed, there will be some shielding. Uh, you'll see side panels installed to kind of block out side noises. So it, these are real world problems, but there are solutions for them. Next question, is it possible to digitize the hotel manager? Yes, it is possible to digitize the hotel manager. However, what we feel most brands do is they uh, create a avatar of what we'll call a brand ambassador. And that avatar will represent them across all their different touch points, all their digital touch points. So you would imagine at Novotel, it would be the same AI human in Seoul as it would be in another location. And that's typically the way we see this going on rather than digitizing individual people. Uh, okay, can facial animations and gestures of the virtual humans be controlled manually? Uh, gestures, hand gestures can be controlled. You can have the virtual humans wave at people, point to something on the screen. There is part of the deep learning process 
we learn how they move their hands naturally when they talk. And then you can also uh, code in gestures when you want to gesture for a specific action. Facial animations are typically, we shoot in a persona of a customer or sales associate or an AI concierge. So we're not changing facial animations on the uh, avatars themselves. For example, they're not getting upset. They're not getting angry. They're typically leading with a bright, energetic, smiley persona, and that persona is maintained. Okay, what happens when there are problems with the internet? Does it work offline? So we support both cloud connectivity and uh, on-premise connectivity, and we do have clients implementing both. So for on-premise, you do not require an internet connection at all. Uh, we've worked with Kiosk and Lenovo with their Edge server, and we have an implementation that we've demonstrated showing the Kiosk running on the Edge, so it doesn't require uh, any internet connectivity at all. As per industry analysts, digital humans is still a very new technology. Do you see rapid industry adoption? I've been doing a lot of talking, so Mike, what do you think? Yeah. I let me just make sure I'm not on mute. But um, yeah, for adoption in this space, I think will happen quicker than most technologies. I do think that, first of all, there's use cases. There's people that are actually using it. We've been kind of talking about a virtual concierge for a while. So the fact that we've been talking about it for so long and it's finally coming to life, I think in, in a real manner, in, in a way that you know, with great providers who are doing some cool things already in this space, I, I think it's going to, I think we're going to start seeing these pop up very quickly. Morgan, do you have anything on that? No, I agree. Um, I think it's exciting to see it pop up and in, in mostly these boutique type hotels right now. I can't say that I've seen you know, exactly an AI concierge or that that such been deployed in, in like a mainstream um, hotel. But I, I think that's next. I think um, Mike made a good point earlier where it's, it's not about um, replacing the staff. You know, we went through COVID and we were very contactless and it was very much about reducing that human to human contact. But that's that's really not the focal point anymore. The point is um, convenience, the point is that customer enhanced um, experience. And so adding this as an extra layer of convenience, it's the same thing you see in, you know, when you check in at the airport, kiosk. When you get your rental car, sometimes kiosk. When you order from a restaurant, potentially kiosk with an AI, you know, person taking your order as well. So I think this is just the natural next step for this industry is to start um, incorporating um, this technology. Yeah. And I'll, I'll agree with your point that it's not about replacing people. It's about having people, uh, handling the more complex tasks, mm -hmm. and simple Q and A's and, uh, the questions, what time does the pool open? It's going to be the same answer every time. So these types of things are, are, are well suited for AI humans and those types of applications. And with that, we've been running for 45 minutes. So I think I'll wrap it up. I don't know if there's any closing words, Mike. No, I would just like to thank everyone for their time and and for the audience. Absolutely look out, look out for these solutions because there, there are more and more of them that are coming and being introduced and they are very worthwhile. And I think it's going to be exciting. We are just on the very cusp of what I think is some very cool innovation being invited into the industry. And it's great to have partners such as Deep Brain and Kiosk who are looking at this stuff. All right, Morgan, any any closing words from Kiosk? No, I think this was very valuable. I appreciate you both uh, for being available for this and sharing your industry expertise uh, with us. I will just again say that um, my contact information is available if anyone has questions about the Kiosk components and hardware specific. Um, I can speak more to that um, offline, so. Awesome, thank you so much. And with that, I'll close the session out. Thank you to all our participants. Thank you to our panelists. Uh, there were several questions that we didn't get time to answer. However, we will reach out via email and make sure all the questions get answered. And as I mentioned, everyone who registered will get a copy uh, recording of this presentation. And uh, thank you so much, everyone.
Bye. Thank you.